Welcome to another SciSolved online discussion. I am Antonio. I am with Nicole and Matthew. And in, a pre in the previous weeks, we have um, found a starter pack meme, if you'd like to call it that way, that portrays how scientists are scripted in blockbuster movies, okay? Um, it's mostly made out of stereotypes that we are going to just um, discuss today um, and give them practical relevance. So some may be true, false, or something in between. So the first one I would like to discuss is lab coat but no gloves. So obviously there are many labs where you need to wear a lab coat because it protects you from the things that you are using. And thus, it is a safety a standard protocol for being in a lab. However, sometimes scientists are not always inside a lab. So wearing a lab coat is not necessary to be a scientist. Sometimes you need to do field work outside, for example. And of course, you don't wear a lab coat if you go outside. Another common thing is that in movies, scientists do not wear gloves while they're doing their experiments. Wearing gloves is another safety protocol in many labs because usually it protects you from the things that you are using. However, sometimes in other labs, such as biotechnology labs, where you are working with cells or with some kind of living thing, you also wear gloves so that you do not contaminate the things that you are working with, such as, for example, when you are culturing cells in a lab. Another common feature is when scientists are shown with clipboards in their hands and always writing on these clipboards. So writing and noting what you are observing is an important part of science because when you are performing an experiment on something, you need to have detailed notes on what you are doing and what your result is. However, using a clipboard is not normally the common thing among scientists. Usually you have a lab notebook where you write all your methods, all your results, and all the information that you gain during the experiment. If you are doing a field work outside, sometimes clipboards are used because they are much easier to write notes on outside where there is a lot of wind and different weather conditions. Another common thing in science movies is that women are shown as supermodels. So obviously, like, women can be very different and anyone can be a scientist. Mostly, women are shown as being good looking because that's what like sells in movies and in television. But of course, like everyone can be a scientist. And on the other side, men are usually portrayed as mad scientists. It is actually a staple of a male scientist to be the one with the crazy hair and the one who is running around doing crazy experiments, almost getting himself and his colleagues killed. Now, um, uh, the main reason for this is simply because it is exciting to watch. Okay, so uh, science and uh, most scientific experiments are lengthy and they don't really contain anything which is too much of an awe regarding the actual methodology um, uh, so uh, you know when people write scripts they want the lab scenes to be extra exciting so by adding a touch of madness they are actually achieving that um, uh, lack of predictability that would then engage the audience while in movies scientists and madness are very much interlinked it is very very far from what is true because the scientific community is so-called strict on the material that is produced by scientists. If you are a scientist and you publicly portray uh, insanity, your work is most likely going to be discredited. So the best way to put it is that it is very difficult to have a long scientific career while being publicly insane. Next is that in movies, microscopes seem to be used for everything. So 
microscopes are actually very important in most um, laboratory research, but they are not the only, and sometimes they're not even the most important equipment that a scientist needs. For example, um, if you would like to detect what are called surface markers on top of uh, cells, you wouldn't even use a microscope. You use what is called a um, flow cytometer, which is a much bigger and much more expensive machine that doesn't have a microscope. And uh, from the potentially tens of machines that you'll find in a lab, only one or two would be an actual light microscope. Secondly, I would like to add to this is that um, the microscopes which are portrayed in movies are always those lens microscopes um, uh, which have the eyepiece. Those, while quite traditional, are actually slowly becoming phased out because in most modern labs, now microscopes are digital. They are connected to co a computer or they themselves have a screen. And if you go to a modern lab, most likely you will find instead of scientists staring into tubes from a microscope, um, they would actually look at computer screens that would be portraying what is being shown on the microscopic camera. Thirdly, experiments in movies coincidentally always take about like five minutes or they would be um, represented as this really epic montage but in reality if you actually take in what's being presented if you concatenate all the clips the experiment is being portrayed to only have taken for example an hour the reality is that experiments can take a lot of time and by a lot of time um, just to put stuff into perspective an undergrad dissertation can take as much as a year a master's as much as two years and the PhD as much as three to four years. Uh, so those aren't really things that you can portray in a 30 second montage. This is also something that will uh, help general public appreciate that lab research is lengthy and difficult and uh, we shouldn't let what we see on television make us think that uh, being a scientist is a walk in the park. So liquids in the lab, are shown on movies and TV to have different colors. This is true. For example, when you mix starch and iodine together, it will form a starch and iodine complex with an intense blue color. Another example is when copper reacts with water, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. In this case, it turns from its elemental reddish brown color to a green color. However, most liquids in the lab are colorless. Another stereotype that is found in movies is the shape of the DNA in scientific labs. The shape of the DNA is not found in every lab. Why? Because there are different labs. There is the biology lab, which most of the time you would find the shape of the DNA there. But there are also chemistry labs and there are also physics labs. The DNA molecule isn't present in each and every lab. Adding on your point, Matthew, you do actually find quite a lot of posters hung outside or inside labs. But those posters would uh, be summaries, so to speak, of previous research that would have been held in that particular lab. So um, after creating what's called a paper, scientists can also create a uh, a pretty attractive poster that would summarize that paper in order so that people passing by could actually read about the research uh, without having to read, for example, a 15-page document. Another common science myth is that most scientists are just people who only talk about science and do not like anything else, do not do anything else, do not know about anything else. Their only focus in life is science and that's it. Well, I mean, of course, this is not true. And most scientists are just normal people. They have other interests and other hobbies that they like to do outside of work. So, for example, I myself like to play the piano, which is completely different to science. For example, I like to go to the bar. I like to go to the gym. I like to play football. I am particularly fascinated by the arts, as in I've been painting for the past uh, 12 years now. Um, it's my main pastime. Of course, we are examples of 
of scientists, of people who love science, but also love to do other things outside of science and have many different hobbies. So that brings an end to our online discussion. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions and would like to elaborate on any topic, feel free to um, comment. Also, don't forget to leave a like on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, SciSolved. See you on another episode.